Okay, so I'm going to try and do an example in BlueJay of um, object diagrams. We'll see how well this goes. Um, what I have done is I've taken the Better Ticket Machine project from the BlueJay book in Chapter 2, and I have added a um, set price method. I actually added the set price method that you can find in... Um, in exercise 2.30 in the book, so it's a, it's a set price method that really should be part of the naive ticket machine, but um, I didn't want to give you the answer to the hard one. So um, I have a set price method, but besides that, this is the same um, the same code as the as the better ticket machine code, and in addition, I have my own test class, and you can get the code for all of these classes at this URL, it's www.rowan.edu slash tilde k-a-y slash java slash blue j code where blue j is all lowercase and then we got a capital C there. Okay, so let me show you my test code. I am completely assuming that you know um, everything there is to know about the Better Ticket Machine. If you don't know the Better Ticket Machine project, you really should should take a look at it. Um, so here's my class test. Notice that I don't have any instance variables. I have a default constructor that does nothing except prints a message that says I'm running it. And then I have a method called quiz code because this was a quiz in my class. And I make a few integers, I make a few ticket machines, and then I mess with stuff in the ticket machine. So what we're going to do is we're going to step through this code and see exactly what happens and how it should be drawn. So let me make this window a little bit narrower and see what we can do and whether I can show you everything all at once. Um, so let's start with this code. It says int a. That means now we are in we are in the quiz code method. All right, and that means we need some scrap paper for quiz code. Okay, and what I'm actually going to do is I am going to treat this whole screen here as my scrap paper for quiz code. Okay, and um, notice this quiz code, quiz code doesn't have any parameters, so we don't have any need to pass in any um, parameters to set up any, any boxes in here to start out with. Okay, so the first line of code says int a, declare an integer um, called a. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a box and call it a. Hang on. Okay, so we've made a box. It is of type integer. It's called A, and we've started it out with its default value, which is 0. Okay, so now we're going to go on to the next line of code. That says int B, so we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to make a new box of type int and call it B and initialize it to its start value, its default value. So there you go. There's another box, and of course it's 0 because it's an integer. The default value is 0. All right, and then we've got int C. We're going to do exactly the same thing again. So hang on. All right, and now we do the next line. It says int price. So same thing again. Hang on. Okay, so we got our four integer boxes all initialized to their default value. The next line in code says ticket machine TM1. All right, that means we're going to make a new box. Hang on, let me draw it and then I'll tell you what it does. Okay, there it is. I should really write ticket machine in here, but I can't fill it in there. So um, I have just written TM. The variable name is TM1. And it is a it is a object that's not a primitive type. It's a variable that's not a primitive type. It's an object. So the default for that is to have an arrow that points to null because variables that are of objects always include arrows and they always point to null. Okay, so now let's do the next line. It says ticket machine TM2 and so we're going to end up with the same picture. Hang on. There you go. And some people will point the arrows to the same word null. Some people point it to different nulls. I'm going to just for ease of drawing, I'm going to point it to the different word nulls, but really there's one concept of null, right? It means this space intentionally left blank. And now over here we've got Ticket Machine TM3, so let me make one more of these. Exactly the same thing again. Remember, it's an object, so it's going to point to, um, it's going to point, it's going to be an arrow in the box instead of a primitive type that has a value. Okay, so there's our three values, uh, sorry, our, 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 our three um, 
new variables we just made, but of course we have a total of seven variables. These are all just boxes that are inside of our, our quiz code, it's called, and quiz code has some scrap paper where we're keeping track of all of our, all of our variables. Okay. The next line of code says A gets three. We always evaluate the right-hand side, put the answer in the left-hand side. The right-hand side evaluates to the number three, so we're going to put that into A. Each box of the, each of these boxes can only hold one thing, so the zero is going to go away. So there you go. I crossed out the zero and I put in a three. We have another assignment statement here. Do the right-hand side, put it in the left. B gets seven, so evaluate the right-hand side. That's seven. Put it into the left-hand side. That's B, so we're going to cross out that zero. Hold on. There you go. So now B gets 7. C gets A. Evaluate the right-hand side. Put it in the left. The right-hand side has a th is A. A is a variable. There's no quotes around it. It's not a string. So it is this box here. It has the value 3. Where do we put that? Into C. Okay. So hang on. Let me do that. All right. So C got A. It's this line. And now B gets C. Evaluate the right-hand side, put it in the left. C is 3. We're going to put that into B. So hang on. Okay, so there you go. So the 7 got crossed out, and now we have a 3 in there. All right, we're ready to keep going. Now, this line says TM1 gets new Ticket Machine 25. All right, this is another assignment statement. We need to evaluate the right-hand side and put the answer in the left. Now, evaluating this means running the constructor method for the uh, ticket machine class. Now hang on one second. Okay, so here's my guidelines. When you see the keyword new, what you want to do is step one, make a box with a crown on it. Um, if you're in my class, you'll understand this. If not, you'll see it in a little bit. Number two, put boxes with the instance variables inside with default values. Step three, make scratch paper and make temp boxes for the formal parameters. Step four, copy the actual parameters into those boxes. Step five, run constructor method on um, the new local variables go on the scrap paper, but new objects don't. Step six, get rid of anything on your scrap paper. I'm going to go through this step by step. I'm not going to leave this list up here because I just don't have enough screen real estate for it. So you may want to take a screenshot, put it aside, copy it down, whatever. But I'm going to refer to this even though you can't see it. Okay, so let's move that out of your way. So what we're going to do is we were on this line here. Oops, go away for a second. We were here where it said TM1 equals new ticket machine. So we're going to remember that we were paused here. It's an assignment statement again. Evaluate the right-hand side, put it in the left. So we will evaluate new ticket machine 25. And when you have a command for a new object, what you do if you look at the rules that you can't see right now, the first thing is you make that box with a crown. So let me do that. Hang on. Okay, so I had to resize my image a little bit, but, but here's my new box with the little crown on top that we make. And one thing that I didn't actually say in my rules, but I'll, I'll say them now, is make a new box and then put the name of the class up at the top. So I'll do that. So for those of you screen shooting at home, there you go. I did one and then I added and put name of class. Let's say name of class at top. Okay. Um, and so there you go. There's my ticket machine. And then step two was put boxes with instance variables inside with default values. So what we have to do is we have to go into BlueJ. Where are you, BlueJ? And, um, and let's double click on test. No, sorry, on ticket machine to open up the ticket machine class. And look at that. Here it is. We got to look at what are my instance variables. Here we go. We've got private int price, private int balance, and private int total. So I've got three instance variables, all ints. They're called price, balance, and total. All right, hang on. Okay, so I did step two. I made boxes for price, balance, and total. They're all three ints, and I set them up with a default value. Okay, the next line says make scratch paper and make temporary boxes for the formal parameters. So now you got to hold on while I do that. Okay, so we're doing all right. And now what do we have to do? We have to make the scratch paper and make temporary boxes for the formal parameters. Okay, where were we? So put default, we did step two. Now make scratch paper and make temp boxes for the formal parameters. So we look at the formal parameters. We were in the new ticket machine. So let's look at the code for the ticket machine. There we go. And the when we run the, the ticket machine constructor, there's one formal par there's one parameter, right? We're using the constructor with one integer parameter, one integer parameter. It's called ticket cost. It's of type int. So let's stick that on the scratch paper. 
There you go. And I made it a bigger box than normal just so I could fit the whole name ticket cost in there. Okay. So, oops, hang on. It shouldn't start with zero though, right? Bad, bad, bad. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to initialize it. Pretend there's no zero there, okay? Bear with me. We're going to initialize it to whatever was in the argument here. It said fi uh, 25, so that's the actual parameter is 25. So in here, I'm just going to let you watch this live. Wahoo! There you go. So we made scratch paper. We made tempoc for the formal parameter, and we copied the actual parameter, which was 25, into that formal parameter. Now we're going to run the constructor method. So if we look at the code for the constructor method um, in BlueJ for the ticket machine, the constructor says price gets ticket cost. So you always look on your scratch paper first and you say, huh, do I have a ticket cost? Yeah, 25. And that was the right since I put that in price. Do I have a price in here? No. Well, I was working on this guy, so let me change that. And I'm going to change that zero. Oops. I'm going to change that 0 to a 25. Hold on. All right, cool. And then it says balance gets 0. So I'm going to change that 0 to a 0. I'm really going to cross it out and put another one in. And I'm, I'm doing the cross out thing just so you see that, um, that that's what happens. And then, sorry, you're going to have to watch the graphics a little bit. I'm getting sick of hiding this from you. It says total gets 0. So we cross out the old one and we have total gets 0. Okay. Um, it says new local variables go on the scrap, but we didn't have any new local variables. Um, new objects do not, but we don't have any new objects. And then it says um, get rid of anything on your scrap paper. We finished this method, right? We're done running the constructor method. So now we got to get rid of anything that was on the scratch paper. So this scratch paper, we're just going to crumple up. Goodbye. It's gone. All right. So let me just crumple it up. Hold on. That's not bad crumpling, is it? Okay. So now we were here, right? We just did TM1 gets new ticket machine 25. Now, when we made the new ticket machine, what it evaluates to is really just this, an arrow somewhere out in outer space that's pointing at this thing. Now, this says evaluate the right-hand side, put it in the left. Well, the right-hand side evaluates to an arrow pointing at this object. We're going to put it into TM1. And when you say put an arrow, it just means point the thing in TM1 at this. So this pointer to null goes away. So there you go. That the, the, We crossed out the old one. And in its place, what we're going to do is we're going to put this new arrow that points to the same thing that the arrow that the constructor function um, returned. Okay, so, so we returned this arrow. Now this arrow here is kind of a never never land. It's pointing at this, but nobody is really pointing at it because we, we crossed out all this junk. So I'm actually going to delete this arrow now. We're done with it. We did the return. We caught the value from the return. We pointed TM1 to the same thing that got returned. And now I'm just going to get rid of this so it doesn't confuse us. All right. Now we do the same thing with TM2. It says TM2 gets new ticket machine B. So what I would do, what I would do is I would say, all right, let's evaluate the right-hand side. We're going to make a new ticket machine. The actual parameter now is B, so we got to look in the B box over here, the value 3, to figure out what the price is going to be, right? I'm not going to show you all that. Let me just show you what it looks like when we're done, all right? Hold on. Okay, so after we're done, we end up with two ticket machines. TM1 is pointing at this one. TM2 is pointing at this one. All right. The next line says TM3 gets TM1. Well, evaluate the right-hand side, put it in the left. TM1 evaluates to this arrow here, right? And so we just need to take TM3, put a new arrow in there that now points to the same thing that TM1 points to. So hold on. All right, so it's not the most elegant thing in the world, but, but there you go. TM3 is now pointing at the same thing as TM1. Why is it doing that? Because it says TM3 gets TM1. Evaluate the right-hand side. That evaluates to the, an arrow to here. And copy that arrow into the left-hand side, which is TM3. And copying an arrow just means copy whatever it points. Make a new arrow that points to whatever this one points to. So there we go. All right. Now it says TM2.setPrice50. So we're going to take whatever TM2 points at, right? And we are going to run the setPrice method on that with the parameter of 50. So 
we will, I'm going to just, to make my life easier, I'm going to get rid of this piece of scratch paper here and use that space for new scratch paper. Now, nah, maybe I'll just put it on the bottom. Hold on. Okay, so we've got our new set price um, scratch paper here, right? That should really say set price scratch, shouldn't it? Okay, we've got our new set price scratch paper here. And when we look at the set price method inside of the Blue Jay ticket machine, there's the set price. It has one um, parameter. That parameter is an integer called P. So we're going to set up in our scratch paper just a box for that. Hold on. Okay, and then it's ran set price. The actual value was 50. So we stick 50 in there. And then we run the set price method. So let's find the set price method in the ticket machine. And the set price method says price gets P. Do the right hand side, put it in left. P, anything on my scratch paper? Yeah, it's 50. Price, anything on my scratch paper? No, so I have to use the object I was working on. And I'm sure you remember that I was doing set price on, on TM2. So TM2.setPrice, so TM2's price is no longer three. It's now going to be 50. There you go. So we did that. Um, that was actually the end of the uh, of the set price method. It's pretty short. So we're done set price. We're going to cross out the scratch paper for set price. There we go. And we're back here. We just did TM2.setPrice50. Now we got to do TM3.setPrice2. What's going to happen? Well, TM3, whoever that points at, that's this one. We're going to set the price to two. I won't show you the nitty gritty, but this is going to end up as two. So there you go. And now we just got to run these print lens. And if you look at the print lens, the first one prints A is, oops, yes, A is A. So it's going to print A is, well, that's three. B is B, well, B is three. C is C, it's going to print C is three. The next line of code says price equals tm1.getPrice. Well, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but you can look at this picture and see that if I run get price on the thing TM1 points at, that gives me two, and I'm going to put that into here. So price is going to get crossed out, and we're going to put a two in there instead. Okay? So then when we system dot, dot print, print line TM1 price is, it'll print TM1 price is two. The next line says price gets TM2 dot get price. So again, this two is going to get crossed out, and TM2's price, which is 50, is going to get put in here. So there you go, and then we print... We have system.out.println tm2 price is whatever, so we'll print tm2 price is price. Well, we're using this one again. And then we've got system.out.println tm3 price, right? So we're doing the same thing for tm3. So we would print tm3 whose price is 2, right? We'd put it into price. I'm not doing this line. That gets crossed out. We put a 2 in there. All right, you convinced me I'll do it. Hold on. Phew, there you go. So we got the two in there that gets printed. So if we actually run this method, because you don't believe me this is really going to work, maybe you do. Do you believe me? Okay. Um, it's already compiled, so I'm going to right-click on test and say new test. We'll just call it test1. And by the way, over here, it said now running the constructor in the test class. There you go. I'll put my terminal window there. And then I will say run my quiz code. And it writes A is 3, B is 3, C is 3, TM1 price is 2, TM2 price is 50, TM3 price is 2. All right, we did it. There's the code. Okay, very good. I hope you watched this. I hope this was useful. Talk to you later.